Today we will discuss the poem An October Morning by Jayanta Mahapatra. An October Morning is a poem which describes an imaginary morning in the month of October. The morning comes with plenty of questions and miseries for which we were not prepared to confront. The word cries is repeated in subsequent lines which emphasize on troubles of our daily lives. The poet explains that the first ray of light in the morning tries to engulf our miseries and pain, but due to our ignorance, we are still living in the darkness. The poet is able to provide us with a close view of life in all its existential dimensions. He reminds us of our lackluster existence and tells us that we are being bound by life's insignificant material pleasures. Let's go to the poem. Dawn edges its way through the crowd of huddled trees. A mole scurries away behind a fallen log. Somewhere the sound of a truck starting like the question one had sullenly fallen asleep with, resuming in the brain. A flight of parakeets circling for a while before their cries are lost in the distance that holds the sunken river stoically silent. Now the poem opens with an imagery of an October morning. Dawn appears through the thickly growing trees. A mole, which is a furry mammal, moves swiftly away behind a log lying on the ground. The sound of a truck starting can be heard in the background. It sounds like a jerking, a sudden start as if one remembers a forgotten question all of a sudden. The poet might have gone to bed the previous night with an unanswered question that had been vexing him. It is reverberating in his brain now. He then presents a flight of parakeets or parrots in the sky. Their cries trail off into silence as they move out into the far distance. Those birds fly out to the direction of a dried, a dried out river. The river is bearing the brunt of drying silently like a stoic. A stoic is a person who is indifferent to uh, pleasure and pain. There is silence everywhere. Cries that fill and empty the mind at the same time, touching the decaying timber by the shore. A trail losing itself in life, saying nothing. How do we know what we are like when we can turn to the dreams we find and build the pose of distance to serve as a symbol? And what a lone cry does sometimes, heading through the empty room where man can dream up ways to prey on his own kind. Thinner than this dawn, light are the instants inside of us that reach the top of the rise where the world spreads the slow flush of beginning once again and where we clearly forget our own deaths. The cries of the birds fill up and empty the mind with various emotions. There are feelings of fear, anxiety and also mixed feelings. The morning light reveals a path passing along the side of the decaying timber by the shore of the river. The path gradually trails away towards the human habitat quietly. The poet asks a question, how do we know what we really are? It is only when we pursue our dreams that we realize what we really are like. Our dreams are so unreal that we treat them as symbols. They are distant. We do not even make 
and attempt to achieve them. The human being thinks of destroying his fellow beings. Sometimes a lone cry, a singular effort can overcome the combined might of the evil forces. The poet is reminded of the similar morning in the past where he could see light spreading on the hilltop announcing the advent of another day. When we watch that superb reddening of the sky at dawn, we forget about our own mortality. The reference is just not only to the real dawn but also to all dawn-like experiences like the feeling of love and pleasure. A breathless light in which a woman suddenly realizes that she must find something to hide her nakedness and in which a temple too can send its sleepy bells fluttering over the smug roofs like a flock of pigeons. The morning is here looking out of a hole in a clay bank like the furry snout of a jackal as familiar dark-eyed women shout to one another near the public water for Zay and two boys sending their parents wrongs grow up genially to be men and we know we aren't ready for answers or for the heart's cries as a web of light is flung across those dim places of the body where we hate to hide again. The light surrounding us can make us breathless by revealing certain things. We listen to the chime of the bells of the temple as it comes streaming over the housetops like a flock of pigeons. The morning has finally arrived. It is compared to a jackal looking out of a hole its clay bank habitat. The morning is also associated with two dark-eyed women shouting at each other near the public water tap. The morning brings to light two boys knowing the wrongs that their parents have suffered and they grew up to be men. The poet says that the arrival of the morning has not prepared us for answers. Finally, a radiant spectrum of light penetrates all the dark corners in our body where we would recoil to hide again. The reality obliges us to confront it, making it no longer possible for us to hide from it. It seems that we love our own ignorance and the resultant darkness and we hate knowledge or light. But reality forces us to confront it. It becomes impossible for us to evade it. Thank you.